Okay, a, a few lines then, or a few couple of paragraphs from Suetonius about Agrippina. Um, Suetonius says, The passion he, Nero, felt for his mother, Agrippina, was notorious, but her enemies would not let him consummate it, fearing that if he did, she would become even more powerful and ruthless than hitherto. So there was... Sorry, he wants to have sex with yep, his own mum? Yep. Yep. So he found a new mistress uh, who was said to be her exact image. Oh, yeah. Some say that he did, in fact, commit incest with Agrippina every time they rode in, a, in the same litter. The, the state of his clothes, when he emerged, proved it. So there was only rumours whether they did or not, but it's, there's just the weirdest relationship. Because there's also a massive power str uh, struggle between them. Yeah. But they're also maybe... Robert Graves goes with that they are... They do sleep together. Yeah. I mean... I, oh, not Nero. He could never do such thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Again, in Roman society, there's a massive taboo. It's not like yeah. some weird Egyptian thing where yeah. maybe it's allowed in, in yeah. the royal courts. No, no. The it's one being of the worst the, things you can do. The pharaoh being the incarnation of the god and the divine lineage on earth should sleep with his sister in Egypt. Right. But yeah. Rome is not Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To kill your parents or sleep with your parents, it's, it's, the, it's the maddest yeah. off the wall thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. You are a maniac. But it seems that Nero is like Caligula, just revels in being subversive, hmm. in shocking. He loves to shock people and the yeah. world. Loves it. Um, so, but it all comes to a head where. I can't believe this ended badly. It's him or her. Hmm. Um, so, this is sort of a fairly. Fame, well, really quite famous passage from Suetonius. He says, The overwatchful, overcritical eye of Agrippina kept on whatever Nero said or did proved more than he could stand. He first tried to embarrass her by frequent threats to abdicate and go into retirement in Rhodes, then having deprived her of all honour and power and even of her Roman and German bodyguard, he expelled her from the Palatine, after which he did everything possible to annoy her, sending people to pester her with lawsuits while she stayed in Rome and when she took refuge on her country estates, making them constantly drive or sail past the windows, disturbing her with jeers and catcalls. In the end, her okay. threats and violent behaviour terrified him because she would still threaten. Yeah. Like, I am the daughter of Germanicus. Hmm. How dare you do it? You know, <laughs> you're just a kid sort of thing. Um, so in the end, he was, we're told, terrified yep. by her violent behaviour. Terrified him into deciding that she must die. He tried to poison her three times, but she had always taken the antidote in advance. So he rigged <laughs> up a machine in the ceiling of her bedroom. It's so weird. Yeah. Um, which would dislodge the panels and drop them, drop them on her while she slept. However, someone gave the secret away. Then he had a collapsible cabin boat designed, which would either sink or fall on top of her. Under pretense of... <laughs> yeah, it's like elaborate... the CIA trying to take out Fidel Castro. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of these madcap ideas, like get a knife, yeah. you know, do yeah. it the old Brutus way. Yeah, like Fidel Castro's exploding cigars. Yeah, it's too elaborate. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Just... Exactly, it's too elaborate. Yeah. Just get a knife. <laughs> Apparently, in Rome, they had all sorts of spectacles. Of course, in the games, in the circus, all sorts of things. One of the things they'd had recently was um, they've been doing it since the age of Augustus is reenacting naval battles. Mm. Apparently, one of the one of the novelties they'd had was a boat that looks like it falls apart and sinks right. and then it reassembles itself. Oh, really? In front of everyone's eyes. Remarkable. In, in, the, um, in, yeah. in the flooded um, theatre, circus. Mm. Um, um, and I mean, this is the, like the, the, the flooding of the Flavian Amphitheatre to host naval battles is one of the genuinely remarkable engineering feats of the ancient Romans. Mm. Like, it's incredible, actually. Of course, that's a little bit later. Um, but yeah, they had, I said the circus, it wouldn't have been the circus. It was, a, I can't remember exactly which theatre, but there was also use a couple of lakes right near Rome. Mm. They would st stage these right, things right. on. Anyway, the point is for this story is that they had engineers that could do something like that. Yeah, it's amazing. So the idea of having a collapsible ceiling on a boat oh, yeah. is might even be child's play for them. I don't know. But uh, quite possibly. Nero's but got someone, he, he's got a man. I it, want this, make it's, it. It's too madcap. You know, just get a knife and stab her. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it doesn't really go to plan. <laughs> so Tony says, under pretense of a reconciliation, he sent the most friendly note inviting her to celebrate the Quincatus with him at Bayai. And on her arrival, he made one of his captains stage an accidental collision w- with the galley in which she had sailed. Then he protracted the feast until a late hour. And when at last she said, I really must get back to Bouli, he offered her his collapsible boat instead. Of, of the damaged galley. Nero was in a very happy mood as he led Agrippina down to the quay and even kissed her breasts before she stepped aboard. He sat up all night on tent hooks of, ans- of anxiety, waiting for news of her death. I take it she didn't die, though. No. So what happens is, um, apparently it's so so weird and sadistic and dark, apparently he's like, he, like when they say goodbye on the key, Tastus goes into way more yeah. detail. He's like telling her how much he loves her and how much he owes her and how much he'd never ever hurt her well, and all this these is things. Childishly obvious that you're trying to kill me now. Give her one last long look, deep look in the eyes, all this sort of thing. So what happens is, to cut the story short a bit, the roof collapse, yeah. collapses, but where she's asleep or lying on a couch that's got raised sides, like a Roman couch. Hmm. Um, it doesn't crush her. That saves her. Her couch just about <laughs> saves her. One of the women next to her is crushed to death. Right. And she's able to just escape, and the whole ship starts going down. Yeah. And she's she's next thing we know in Testus's longer description. She's in the water, and one and most people can't really swim. It so happens that Agrippina can, but most people can't. And someone else next to her, one of her ladies in waiting, effectively, hmm. shouts out to try and be saved. Shouts out, "I'm Agrippina. I'm Agrippina. Save me." And the other people on the boat start clubbing her to death with oars. So Agrippina herself was like, okay, this is clearly a murder. I'm not Agrippina. Help me. <laughs> so she silently swims away, silently <laughs> swims to the shore and survives the incident. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I mean, you've got to give Agrippina credit for being canny, actually. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. 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 So, um, this is- <laughs> um, apparently there was also, just say now, there was a, a, an old um, oracle. Hmm. Or Sybil had yeah. once said to her um, that your future holds that your son will kill you. It's obviously a bit perfect. Yeah. But she was supposed to have said, let him kill me, provided only that he rules. Well, it does come to it. I mean, Nero's oh, only yeah. 21 still. He's a young man. I think sometimes yeah. when you're young, um, you just throw all caution to the wind quite often. But because matricide the... is... That's mad. It's terrible, isn't yeah. it? It's as bad as it gets, really. Um, but then my mum wasn't Agrippina, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she goes to her <laughs> she goes to her uh, mansion um, on nearby. Yeah, and she you know well she, it's clear she she tried. What am I it it do was a now? murder. Yeah. So her only real option, to be fair, is to pretend that she thinks it's an accident still, because if she just says my son's just tried to kill me, he's definitely gonna. Well, I'm just going to have to finish the job. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to finish her off. Um, so she sends a letter to him saying, there's been a terrible accident on my boat, but luckily I've survived. <laughs> oh! um, <laughs> like uh, Wiley Coyote Nero. <laughs> yeah. Agrippina the Roadrunner. So Nero, a bit like um, a bit like the assassins of John Kennedy, realised, well, we just have to kill... We just have to kill Oswald. Yeah. We just have to kill him now. Yeah. Like right now, he's got to die. Don't worry about how bad it looks or anything. She now has to die. Yeah. Um, so he does just send a death squad to her. He apparently orders Burris to do it, and Burris says no. <laughs> Damn it, Burris. Burris says, I'm not going to murder the daughter of Germanicus. And yeah. he's like, okay, you second or third or fourth in command guy, you go and do it. And he's like, yes, sir. <laughs> so they ride out to her, and she realizes as soon as she sees them yeah. that it's all over. Sort of a famous lion. She says, strike my belly. Or Suetonius says, um, yeah, strike my belly. I, you know, this is where he came from. Yeah. Sort of a thing, the symbolism of that. Um, and they do, they just hack her down. Um, yeah. And so there's the story, I don't know if you know, of Orestes, you know, Agamemnon and his wife Clytemnestra, um, and their daughters Electra and son Orestes. In, anyway, in those stories, sort of very famous stories that in the, in the first century AD, especially if you're well-read or well-educated, everyone would have known those stories. Orestes killed his own mother, Clytemnestra. So Nero's sort of the new, a, a new Orestes in the way, in right. a way. Um, apparently everyone, including Nero, goes and views the body. He was supposed to have said, I did not know I had so beautiful a mother. He in- invites people to look at a naked body. 
or even like touch her blood and stuff. Um, there's like stories of, um, you know, like doubting Thomas with Jesus, just a little bit, like just to make sure it's real. Yeah. You like know, she touch the wounds and stuff. You invite senators to do that. Why would I want to do that? Uh, yeah. Apparently loads of people take up the offer. It's like the great Agrippina, because she did have loads of enemies, political enemies as well. Sure. So loads of people were actually sort of happy. Like most people weren't. Most people were aghast. Yeah. But some people, for political reasons, were like, oh, thank God. She was going to have me murdered any day or whatever. You know? Yeah. So yeah. some people are happy about it, but still, yeah. it's still like 95% Be, a complete terrible crime. Being a matricide and having killed the daughter of Germanicus is pretty bad. And Nero doesn't try and cover it up. He's sort of proud of, of it. Doesn't. He's sort of proud of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he, he sort of spins it as though it's a victory. Um, well, if for, any, him, for him, it is a victory. Well, for him, it definitely is. Yeah. But for him, he spins it as though he sort of saved Rome from her dangerous lust for power. There's, there's this crazed woman that tried to rule the world. I've saved Rome from all of that. I mean, that is in some aspect true, but what's in charge? Oh, a crazed boy with a lust for power. Yeah. Right, okay. And he could just push her away. He doesn't have to have her killed. Yeah. Right? Just just do what he did with Otho and deport her somewhere. To there's be... any number of things he could have yeah. done. Yeah. Didn't have to murder her in some weird elaborate way and then have... The Praetorians <laughs> stab her to bits and yeah. then have everyone poke the corpse and look at her naked body. And yeah, you didn't have to do any of that. No, um, but yeah, it was almost like a he tries to paint it like it's a pious act, like he's a savior. Oh, wow, in some ways. Um, yeah, and well, S Seneca decides he's going to play along with it and say, you know, yes, my lord, that was the, correct. But you deep are down, the saviour of Rome from that woman. But deep down, and there's writings that he, you know, he's aghast by it and yeah. horrified by it. Of course, sort of, of course. Um, Nero puts on loads of games um, and lots of um, in theatrical... honour of murdering my mother. Yeah, yeah, he's completely unabashed about it, hmm. and it is really one of the biggest uh, checks on his power. He mm. is now pretty much an a, you know an old school princeps. He now, is now it's the just autocrat. up to Burris. <laughs> yeah, there's still Burris and Seneca, uh, sort of trying to keep him in yeah. some sort of check. But really, he there's no one that can immediately say m to most things no. Mm. Um, you know, Burris can sometimes in the immediate if something's sort of immediately crazy and violent, Burris mm. might say no. But on big things like big building projects or big policies governmental policies he can now do as he pleases to watch the full video please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com